Welcome to Race School, the programme that follows seven pupils through the International Race School at Silverstone. It's day four and the pressure is beginning to mount as race day looms. All the pupils have passed their exams, both practical and written, and now they need to fine-tune their skills. There's little time to waste though, so it's up early for morning practice, first thing in the Formula Fords. This is their last chance to brush up the finer points of their racing technique, so not a second of seat time is to be wasted in these sporting single-seaters. It's not pulling enough revs down the straight. Basically, I'm just uh, checking the, the uh, ignition timing. Um, we've had a look at it before, and it is a bit advanced. Um, with the hot conditions as well, it's, it, that could be sapping its power. Car 31, the Japanese lad, is on his first session and um, yeah, he hasn't been in the car for a while and uh, another car, the other car was coming up inside him and he turned in on him, so uh, you, know, you will get this <laughs> in experience I'm afraid, but uh, you know, there's plenty of room to let, let both cars go through the corner. But there you go, that's what it's all about, you know, we've got to try and teach them these things. Well basically, um, as you can see, this, this nose cone is now um, dead as it were. Um, they cost about 150 to 200, 200 pounds a piece. Um, they are actually a cushionable structure, which means that in, uh, in a collision, either with a tyre wall or with another car, they are designed to actually crumple like this and actually absorb some of the impact. Uh, basically, they're coming in after a lapping session for a debriefing session with their instructors. At this stage, proceedings are up to full revs, full use of power. Um, they're flat out basically, so we're really fine tuning the smaller bits are getting wrong now at this stage. They've done a couple hundred laps, so they should all know the line back to front by now. And it's just really working on the balance, you know, weight transfer, and really getting the absolute maximum out of each car. Uh, some of them are overdoing certain aspects, like carrying too much speed into corners, therefore locking up brakes and losing time. So uh, it's just really fine tuning them at this stage for the race day on Sunday. One spin, <laughs> just one leg. How are you getting on, all right? Too aggressive. So you're going to calm down a bit, yeah? Yeah. Slow in, fast out. Remember that, OK? okay so for this time, it's time to give it another whirl. OK? It's not like you don't do it. It's just you need to be a bit more consistent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's a handful of times every session if you're lucky. Four revs again, OK? Last one before lunch. My technique was wrong when I was going into the corners because when I, I braked not quite enough and then covered the throttle so I was carrying too much speed into the corners and then when I felt I was going too fast my reaction was to take my foot off the throttle so of course I started to spin so I had two spins and then I went out, out of the pits after they explained what I was doing wrong and I went to uh, West which is the um, corner I span at three times already and I didn't cover the throttle enough and I lost the car, I got into a big spin and there was lots of cars following me so there was no way for them all to um, avoid me so one car just drove into the back of me I, my car lifted in the air I lost a wheel I think his car was damaged too so they had to call the end of the session and now I'm carless <laughs> This exercise will test the standards of the pupil's car control to the limit as they drive the fantastic Catrums and draw on every lesson they've learned in the course.
very, very difficult to keep the, uh, the car in the direction you want it to go. Um, just keeps spinning out all the time. But uh, it's good fun to drive anyway. Good fun. <laughs> Pretty bad at spinning again. It's really slow because I stall it when I spin. I tried to put it in first gear, what you're supposed to, and put the clutch in my put it in reverse. <laughs> um, is it, you just you just can feel the spin coming on. I still haven't quite grasped how to get out of the spins yet. Everyone else is much better at that. Well, what we've got here is the caterums, and this is what we call the handling stage. And the car has got very, very hard tyres on the rear. We use that to see the guys controlling it by the brake and the gas pedal. In other words, what we want to be able to see them is to control the slides by the throttle. Throttle and hand steering into it is very important. As you can hear in the background, they've already lost their control already. So it's a very difficult exercise, but it's a very important one for them to do. Usually what people do when the car oversteers, the first thing they do, what they will do, they will turn into the skid and then they will come right off the gas pedal. What you have to do is to turn into it and control it by your foot on the gas pedal. And that's a very important exercise. That's what we're finishing up now. Okay? <laughs> He's not made it. <laughs> Just going out for a little spin with Clinton, a star pupil on the course fresh from the South African National Championships and he's going to give me a little bit of a ride in the Caterham 7. Should be fun. Let's go. I'm, in, I'm involved in a number of things, uh, public relations, promotions, advertising, um, as well as of uh, an advanced driving skills course. Um, it's a specialised uh, driving skills company um, that I'm involved in, um, in partnership with uh, Grant McCleary, he's also a super tour touring car driver. Um, and we teach people the basics of, of driving and all that, as well as advanced and corporate events. Okay, and what about you, um, stuff in South Africa? You're a Champion, I understand. Yes, um, I'm involved in, in at, it was then, in, in 97, Stanek Group N, um, and I'd raced in that for two seasons. In the 98 season, I won the championship um, with, uh, with most, most of them were wins. Um, and then from there, I've progressed through to Open Motorsports, and I'm now in Class C in Midas Group N, um, and I'm racing a 180RS Cadet for Delta Motor Corporation. Why are you here that you must have raced this school this week? Um, the whole reason is um, is because I won it as a as a prize for Rookie of the Year last year, um, along with my championship that I did win. Um, so I've been able to come and you know what expenses paid to the UK for my first time, brush up on the skills, and uh, and I've really enjoyed it. I think it's been fabulous. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be taking part in a race this, towards the end of this month um, and uh, it was an invitation I think just to uh, show the young chaps what I can do, <laughs> which is not much really. Okay, and when, when are you, whereabouts are you racing and when are you racing Paul? Um, I'm racing here, I'll be racing the Fiestas. Have you had any experience of race car driving before? I've only ever done charity stuff, I've done a little bit of go-karting. Um, I did do a Fiesta race many years ago, but uh, we weren't tutored. It was a couple of times around the course and now you're on your own. And that time I spun the car, over steer I believe, and um, came off. So I'm hoping to be able to correct that. But I've done all right in, um, in go-kart racing and banger racing, I've, <laughs> but I don't think you can apply those laws here. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I'm getting better each go, yeah. You just have to uh, force yourself a little bit. I'm taking all the advice that they can give me, and it's all helpful advice, you know. So uh, I don't think for one minute I'll be any other place than the back, because I think pride wouldn't let them have me be anywhere else when I do this race, because it's all against um, proper drivers. But I, I can give it a good go. But what have you actually learned this morning, then? Actual facts you've learned? Um, corner approaches, throttle control, um, the variation from car to car differs greatly um, as to how you would approach each corner and come out of each corner. So you, there's always something to learn, you know. Was it kind of off-putting having uh, all these uh, learners here on the, on the course as well at the same time? Not really. I mean, it's nice to have something to race against, but their strategy is different from mine. So, I, uh, because their car will handle a lot differently. So uh, it's just a case of working out where I can make my moves, you know, without going too over the top. Otherwise, I get told off. <laughs> so after the big day, are you going to do any more of this? Um, I like it very much, but it's a very expensive sport, isn't it? <laughs> Find me a sponsor. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Hey, <laughs> there you are. I've been meaning to have a word with you about something. Join us after the break when Eddie Hagen gives us an insight into the skills of an experienced racing driver with a few fast laps of Stowe Circuit in a specially race-prepared Vauxhall Vectra. Silverstone Stowe Circuit exiting the pit lane. Checking there's no traffic out. North corner, very tight, short entry. Exiting down the back straight. Into south corner. Feeling and towing, maximizing the revs, keeping the car balanced. Quite a long entry to the apex, keeping on to the right hand side, moving to the left for the S's. Small dab of the brakes, first clipping point, keep the car to the right, change direction, clipping point left. Onto a short straight and into south corner. Mac Important to get a very clean exit onto the straight so that we maximize speed down the straight. Heavy braking into north corner. Demonstration of healing and towing, flipping the throttle, cars balanced into the apex. Down the back straight again. to south corner, onto the brakes, flipping the throttle, heeling and towing, down through the gears. Seems to take forever to get to the apex, letting car run wide, not too wide, so we can get back left onto the first part of the S's. First clipping point, second clipping point, down the short straight into south corner. Dab of the brakes, into the apex. Down the main straight, to fourth gear, hard on the brakes, into the apex of north corner, and a car white, run white, down through the gears. Probably the most important safety device for the modern racing driver is the crash helmet. High speeds mean that should a crash occur, it's likely to be serious, and so it's important to minimize the injury. In the early days of racing, a simple leather cap was considered to offer enough protection against a racing incident.
My father had uh, the London Rowing Club colours on his crash helmet, the famous uh, white stripes, and, uh, and I've been very proud to carry those colours in motor racing. Every racing driver has his own individual colours painted on his crash helmet, which also makes it easy to identify your favourite driver as they pass. Uh, there's nothing special, it's, it's purely because I was going to start racing and uh, I needed to have a design, I, needed, I wanted to have my own helmet, I didn't want to take my father's or, or take someone else's because I wanted to have a, a career and then I, you know, you, you have to start with a helmet and then you keep it throughout your, all your career, so I just took a piece of paper and some colours and, and had fun with it. Meticulous care is taken when spraying the crash helmet so that when finished the product forms an immaculate part of a racing driver's uniform. Mark, end of day four, um, tell, give us an overview of the weeks. Uh, extremely stressful from my point of view actually. No, it's been a good week, you know, the weather has been fantastic. It's like being the south of France or somewhere, so that helps an awful lot. Actually causes us some problems with the cars. You're fighting against overheating now as opposed to anything else. Also works the tyres very, very hard. Um, the drivers have done very, very well the last couple of days. Obviously today, you know, they're absolutely flat out. There's no control on revs anymore and it really is getting them to tone themselves up to being able to put together 15 race laps in a consistent pace. Philippa had an entertaining day today. She went out this morning, went off a couple of times, uh, got involved with an incident basically. She spun for the third time. Uh, the car rolled backwards, connected with another car, and they took two corners off each car. So lucky enough, both of them walked away on Earth, which is very, very important. Sarah did well again. Sarah's come through times, you know, getting better and better. All The more seat time Sarah has, the better she has. But again, she's going to have to find a little more speed to be on a race pace. Um, but generally, that's to come from within now. It's a question, do I want to go that quickly? Do I want to be on the edge? Jamie's had a couple of problems with his car. We had a slight misfiring problem. But um, I think that almost helped him calm down a little bit. He really worked on his technique today. He got very, very good, very consistent times. Um, drove very well towards the end of the session and I think he'll be a good runner come Sunday. Hunter, again, you know, Hunter's got the speed, he's a quick kid, uh, consistently down times as well today, Con consistently improving his technique. Just really, those two guys in the last couple of sessions really were fine-tuning their driving. It was good to see they did good effort today. They'll do both do be very, very competitive on Sunday. Darren's done well. Again, it's very hard for a complete novice to come through and really, really be on the pace against Carters who have a number of years experience. Because as I said before, you know, they've naturally got speed in their bones and it's just changing techniques. But uh, for Darren, he's a lot more work to do. You know, he's got to get used to the speed. We, you know, it's harder for him to tell what the car is doing as the Carters will have a natural feel for what's happening under the backside really. And that's where you get all your feeling from. It takes a bit of while from a guy with no experience to come through there. Clinton has really been exceptional, you know. He was Rookie of the Year in South Africa, so you know he's going to be something special, hopefully. He's been uh, very, very consistent. He can put in really quick laps, lap after lap after lap, and just tone up the tiniest. He can pick a half inch on the circuit and make a difference. Um, David, David's done very well, you know, from no experience. He's come through the week, done well. He's not very far off the pace. He's a little off what Paul will be but that's experience and seat time. It's all about practice, isn't it? Practice makes perfect, as they say. And uh, David, he's done well. Again, he's got to his best lap time today, this afternoon, so they should be happy with his performance. Join us next week on Race School for Race Day, the culmination of the course. Every pupil must compete in the race to go through and win their much-prized racing license.